Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Uh, we are really excited to have Joe Pitawanaku with us today, and uh, he's going to be sharing um, with you all some incredible Anishinaabe knowledge um, about plants. Um, my name is Jody Williams, and I'm the Indigenous Education that I'm the Indigenous Education Coordinator for here at Dufferin Peel District School Board. Um, and we're just delighted to host Joe. So I'm gonna now turn it over to you, Joe, to take it away. All right, cool. <laughs> well, this will be super fun. I have, um, I have a, a, a lot that I, that I wanna share. And uh, hopefully one of these days, I'll, I'll be able to bring some of these things to everybody. So you'll be able to, to be able to actually try it. But yeah, I have, uh, I have a really fun um, medicine that uh, I was taught by my grandma, a plant medicine. And uh, I, I wanted to share it all share it with you guys. So um, I have a little video that where I explain it. And so um, I'll play you guys, I'll play you guys the video. Um, in this one, we talk a lot about the medicine, but it's a really good introduction to uh, to our language, to an Ashnabemun uh, language, and how the language that we use to describe all of these different plants for thousands of years. And so that's what I really focus on in this one. And so I, as we go through the video, I kind of want you guys to... Um, listen to the words that I'm saying and, and at least, you know, try to repeat it inside of your head or, uh, or, or, or even out loud. And then uh, maybe even at the end, when the video is over, I'll be here and we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to have a, uh, a little bit of a chat afterwards, a little bit of a discussion. So in case anybody has any questions about the medicine, I'll be able to answer those after uh after the video plays uh so keep that in mind too so if you have questions uh try to try to save them or something <laughs> uh but yeah here we go let's get this uh let's get this playing for everybody Boop. So Joe, it doesn't seem to be, the sound is not working on this video. So if you wanna pause it and we'll reset it. There is a function where you have to um, indicate when you're sharing that you've turned on the sound. Okay. So there's no, there's still no sound. No. <laughs> uh oh. Um, maybe then we could. Hold on, kids. <laughs> uh, maybe then uh, pass the host on to me, and then I'll just share it Zoom style. Okay, just give me a second. Or wait, I could try one last thing. Still no sound. Do you want to try sending the video to me and I'll play it off of my end?
There we go. Sorry, everyone, we will um, just give us a couple more minutes here while we work out the technology. So Joe, usually when you're sharing through Zoom, um, when you click on share screen, there's on the bottom, uh, there's another option that you have to check the box to share the sound. Also under view options. Okay, sweet. Well, I'm really happy and excited to be able to spend a couple minutes with you guys today. Um, my name is Joe Pituanaquit. I'm from Wikwemkong on Manitoulin Island. In, uh, uh, but I live right now in Peterborough, Ontario. Um, and so I used to spend lots of time with my grandma. She knows, uh, this is the craziest thing. I couldn't even believe it. My grandma, when she was growing up, she had, she didn't have a hospital. There was no hospital. There was no doctors. Um, she was like in the forest, living in the forest, living in the bush. They had a garden, they went hunting, they went fishing and they went into town sometimes, but for the most part, they couldn't even go to the hospital. If they got sick or if they got injured, they had to use plants. <laughs> and I always thought like, this is crazy. How crazy? How can you live off of just plants? It, like, we go to the doctor and everything is okay. How did you live without the doctor? And um, I would spend time with my grandma and she would, uh, she would tell us to go find all of these different medicines. And uh, um, she would just describe the way they looked. It was really cool because... The f one of the first medicines she told us to go and find is this one here. It's called Gazibanashk. Gazibanashk, um, it's also called Scouring Rush or Equisitum Hymali is the Latin name. Uh, but my grandma said, uh, I went up to her and I said, hey, I want to make a medicine for like old people because I want to help old people to be healthy as they age and not become sick. And so she said, okay, what kind of problems? What kind of medicine you want to make? I was like, hmm, how about a bone medicine? Because when you get older, the bones break easier. Bones get weak. And when you get older, you're scared of falling over because your hip will break and you have to go for surgery and it's really sad. So I was like, let's make a bone medicine. And she was like, okay, um, go find uh, Gzibnashk. And I was like, oh, what is that in English, Gzibnashk? And she says, oh, I don't know. I don't even think it has an English name. <laughs> because... Uh, the only language that is used to describe all of the areas, everything that we're looking at, of course, is Nishnava language. And our language, we've been here for like thousands of years. Of course, that's, that's what she says. <laughs> uh, and then, and so she says, yeah, all we ever said is Gzibnashk. And that's 
our name for it. Uh, if there's another name for it, I don't know. And uh, it was real neat for me even just to be able to hear that. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, there are common names that people have been here for hundreds of years now. Lots of time to make up names for plants. Um, but Gasib Anushk, that's what it was always called. And it's really cool. So um, um, I, I kind of want you guys to sort of look at it, like just look at it. And I want you to understand that this is uh, this is a bone medicine um, to, that helps like he heal um, what we would call like bone problems like arthritis and when your bones get really weak and I want you just to look at the picture that's that's here um, and so I picked a bunch of it and while I was picking it I um, I'm thinking of our language Nishnabe language and I was like hey um this plant is always beside a river. Like everywhere that we found it, it was always beside a river. And so I said, like the way that we would describe a river or a creek is uh, zibe, right? And so gazibe nashk, you could hear that inside of the name zibe, gazibe nashk. And so it's kind of like, whoa, ever cool. Um, I think I just figured something out. And my grandma, her name is Thekla Pheasant, and she is a master speaker. Like when my community, sometimes with new things like computers and TVs and airplanes and helicopters, like there's no Nishnabe name for these. Um, just like when people come over to Ontario for the first time, and there was no name for scouring rush or for gzibnash. They had to make one up. So they made up scouring rush. And then when we see new things too, we use our language to make stuff up, to describe what that, what that object is. And my grandma was a huge resource person in our community for that. So um, everyone, when you wanted to ner learn or remember what a word was, my grandma was the person. Uh, and so... Um, I was really happy that I figured this out on my own, that Gzibanashk, it's probably called that because it's always beside a river or a creek, a zibe or zibis, uh, a little one. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go tell her. So I, I took the plant and I, and I took it to her and I was like, you know what? I think I realized something. Why it's called Gzibanashk? Because it's always beside a river. Um... And my grandma was like, huh, I never thought of that before. I was like, what do you mean you never thought of that before? This plant, it's always beside a river. How, how can you, such a language expert, how can you miss that? And she was like, oh, because one time uh, I was sitting on the porch. I was looking on the, off the deck in my house. And I was just daydreaming. It was real sunny. And then she could hear her mom coming, walking behind her, wa walking up to her real slow. And then she kind of thought, is my mom sneaking up on me? She was like five or six. And uh, she was like, is my mom sneaking up on me? Like she's going to scare me. I wouldn't get scared. And so she just sat there, pretend she can't hear her mom. But she could hear her mom sneaking behind her. Um, and then... Uh, she could kind of hear rustling sounds like uh, sticks rubbing together or something. And her mom had a giant bundle of these plants all dried up. And these plants are hollow. So if we look in the middle, that's the way it looks like if you cut it in the middle. Uh, they ha they're hollow. And then, you, and then you see all those ribs on the outside, all on the outside, that ribbed sort of structure. Um, inside, on the outside of the plant... There's a crystal called silica, and that's what makes up glass. A whole bunch of tiny little pieces of glass are all in the outside of this plant, and plus it's hollow, and plus it's ribbed, 
And so her mom had a giant bundle of it, snuck up behind her and started rubbing them together. And all those ridged pieces were rubbing against each other like glass pieces. You can imagine how glass sounds when it's rubbing against it itself. And plus the hollowness of the stem, like uh, like guitars are hollow, so they're super loud. That sound gets to bounce everywhere and and amplify. And so the hollow plant, the sound is amplified, and it made this screaming sound. Like it honestly sounds like a like a little girl screaming at the top of her lungs. Um, and um, there's a animal that we will call Wagosh is a fox or Wakshen is a little fox. And there's another name for fox though. Um, some people will call fox a sinue. A sinue because that's a screaming sound and every spring foxes they, they scream. That's how they uh, uh, um, that's how they communicate to each other in the spring. <laughs> They're screaming away and they sound like little girls screaming all over the place. It's it's kind of really eerie to listen to. Um, and but that's the word that we use to describe that screaming sound or that whining sound is a sinue. And the like if you take green you know the fire makes that whining sound sometimes uh that's what we will call that a scene and so my gr grandma said her mom rubbed all that plant together and my grandma heard it and she heard the scream and she thought maybe that's not my grandma and she ran super fast into the yard or maybe that's not my mom and she ran super fast into the yard and looked back and she's breathing real heavy and her mom has this medicine on the deck big bundle of it and she's laughing away um and that's what she said to her that's why we call it because it screams at you when they're in the bush and they're in the forest and they're rubbing against each other from the wind or if you're walking through it you'll hear that screaming sound it's super cool super fun so i'll show you a picture of it again uh so you'll be able to remember it when you're out in the bush um and so my grandma said oh that's why it's called that. That's what I always thought. Um, but yeah, you know what? It's always beside a river. So you're probably right too. And so I started thinking, hey man, this is crazy. This plant has two meanings in the one name. Like it tells you where it grows and the sound that it makes. So I went to another person in my community who knows medicine. Uh, and I was visiting with him and I said, hey, you know, you know how it's always by a river? He's like, yeah. I said, you know the sound that it makes when it's dry? That scene, and he's like, yeah, it screams. And, and uh, I said, isn't that amazing? Two names and one, one, uh, two meanings in one name. And he's like, oh, I never even really thought of that before. And I was like, what? You know, this guy, he knows this language so good. So I was like, how can you have never thought of that before? Um, you pick it you you harvest it and you dry it and you make tea and he was like well that's just it like i make tea with this medicine and when you drink it it tastes real sweet inside of your mouth and when you swallow it it turns a little bit sour at the end and so kasio bogan is something that's sour kasio bogan is like a lemon or we call rhubarb if you ever get a chance to try rhubarb you should test it out it's pretty good uh but uh we call rhubarb kasiubak or vinegar you know how vinegar is real sour Ugh. uh vinegar is um ksiwabu. it's a real sour drink and so um kasiubagan is that sour taste wishkabang is that sweet taste so this plant gasibanashk has that kasiobogan taste and so that's what he always understands is it is it's called kasibanashk because it's sour kasiobogangwa so he says well um i guess you're right though tells you what it sounds like what it where it grows but also what it tastes like and then i was like oh three meanings all in one one name of a plant and so i was real excited and um I went to in Wikwamkong we have a 
uh, like a group of all of the language experts all get together and hang out and visit. And so I went over there and I told them what I had found out that this one name, Gazibanash, has three meanings. And she was like, oh, everybody was real happy. I did a little presentation. They were like, oh, they applause. And I felt real good, made a bunch of old ladies real happy. And then uh, one of them, though, was sitting in the back of her chair looking real mad. Uh, and I was like, oh, I must have said something got her upset. Um, and so she raised her hand. And I was like, oh, is everything okay? She's like, yeah. Um, how does your dad tell you to have a shower? <laughs> I was like, oh, um, well, he says, <laughs> and she was like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, I don't know, just go clean, clean your butt. <laughs> clean your butt. And she was like, what does it mean? And I was like, I don't know, with soap or something? And she was like, no. How does he tell you to clean the dishes? And so she says, what does that mean? I was like, I don't know, cleaning dishes. And she's like, Gazibi is scrubbing something, scrubbing something down. He's, so he's telling you to scrub your butt in the shower. Or he's telling you to scrub the dishes. And so Gazibi, that's what it means. And what's this plant? Gazibinashk. And she, she remembers that the outside of this plant is full of glass, full of silica. When you buy sandpaper, you get a bunch of glass that's glued on a piece of paper, basically. And that's what you use to scrub stuff down with. If you went into the... We, when we have these things called scouring pads now that... Um, that uh, we use to clean pots and stuff like that, uh, to scrub stuff down with. Um, if you went into the store 100 years ago, 80 years ago, to buy scouring pads, there was no such thing as scouring pads. What was sold was, um, oops, was uh, a bunch of bundles of this. That's what you use to scrub everything down with. That's why it's called scouring rush in English, because you use it to scour everything down with. Um, the most, the coolest thing. So four names, all in one, four meanings in one name. Gazibanashk tells you where it grows, what it sounds like, a taste that it has, and then a utility use, how you can use this plant as a tool. And so I was super excited. And uh, the, the, but the most important thing that I wanted to share with you guys today, uh, I really wanted you guys to be able to um, recognize this plant and, and, uh, and, and be able to understand it, um, why it's here. So it's bone medicine, right? And you could, you could see that it's bone medicine. So many people are able to just look at this and say, oh, well, you see that the way it rushes out of the ground and there's no branches or nothing. It looks like a spine, the way it looks. Uh, um, and, and actually there's joints. And if you break those joints, there's this real slippery fluid in there, just like you're in your joints. In your joints, you have this oil in your joints that keeps everything moving free. And then sometimes when you get old, you, you run out of oil and then it gets real hard for those <laughs> knuckles to be able to move because uh, they don't have the oil, the grease anymore. Uh, and this plant helps to put that back so everything feels good. Um, but what I want you guys to see though, is the outside of this plant because it's full of glass you can actually see it shimmer in the light if you if you look close enough uh full of glass in the outside and then it has a spongy bone spongy part in the middle and then it's hollow in the center and so the shape of this plant is structured just like every single bone in your body every single bone in your body has the hard really strong outside and then it has a spon spongy bone in the middle and then a hollow center for marrow. So this plant is structured just like every bone in your body. It has joints with the slippery fluid inside. Um, it has all the nutrients your body needs to be able to feed this part, feed your bones, feed all the bones in your body so they can. And actually, 
the one thing I'm way over my time, I'm sorry. But the one thing that I wanted to share is that the, the, um, uh, growing pains. If you ever have growing pains, it's because your bones are not growing fast enough. So if you give your body all of the nutrients it needs to be able to grow bones super fast uh, by using this medicine, we're able to use this for growing pains. Uh, and so really easy to remember the way that it looks like a spine, the way it looks like bones, and then the way that it looks like joints too. This is the part of your body that this plant is designed to heal. So I just wanted to share with you guys real quick, uh, one of my favorite medicines to give your bones everything they need to become super nice and strong and healthy. Um, so, Chumigwach for listening. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to see you guys soon. Vamam <laughs> pi. So, what an incredible journey uh, that video took us on. And I hope for the kids that are watching that you're starting to get a sense of how incredible the Ojibwe language is. So in just, in, just to clarify, in case they weren't aware of that, that what you are hearing is um, what we call Anishinaabemowin, or maybe you've heard the term Ojibwe. So that's just a little bit of the language. And I know we only have, we don't have a whole lot of time left, um, Joe, but um, is there anything that you wanted to add on to what was just shared? You're on mute. <laughs> the famous, uh, the famous words. So maybe while well, Joe's just figuring out how to turn his microphone back on, um, just something else I wanted to point out to the kids that are watching is that, you know, when you go outside, think about everywhere that you go, everything that you see, the trees, the plants, oftentimes we call them weeds, but they're actually, everything is designed for our use to make us healthy and to um, have a really good life while we're living here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to share um, that one in particular is because it's really, really easy to find. And especially now, uh, now we can, it's, it's an evergreen plant. And so on any of our walks or if we're driving around or, you know, any time we're spending outside, um, the chances of us, of anybody being able to find and see that plant that we talked about today, Kasibanushk, is very, very high. And so I wanted to share with you guys something that is probably or can be like right in your backyard, something that you don't not have to really go searching for, but just to keep your eyes open, you know, and you, you've probably already been walking past it or maybe even just from the video already recognize it. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons why we chose that one in particular. So maybe just um, for the kids, like we can try and get them to practice saying the word. So we'll do it together, Joe, you and I. So let's try it. So let's break it down. So you say a part of it and I'll repeat it. And when I'm repeating it, I want the kids who are watching you to try and say it as well. So let's try. Yeah. So we say gazi. Gazi. And then you could say bin. Bin. Let's try that for let's try those first two. Let's do it again. Yeah. So uh, you could say gazi and gazi. bin. Gazi. Gazi bin. Yeah. Can everybody then, try that? Let's let's give everyone a chance to try it. Gazi bin. Gazi bin. Yeah. Gazi bin. Okay, what's the next part? And then you just add right on the very end. Uh ashk. Ashk. Can you guys say that out there? Ashk. Ashk. Oh, I hope you're all trying it out loud. Ashk. All right. Yeah. All together? What's yeah. the whole world word? All together, it would be Gazi Banashk. Gazi Banashk. Gazi Banashk. 
<laughs> that's so cool oh i hope you uh i hope everyone was trying that word out it's important these this is what you're hearing is the original language of this land that you're um all now living on this is anishinaabek territory so this is the language of this land and this language that you're hearing and hopefully today you got a sense of it helps to describe everything around us, all the beautiful, beautiful plants that are here for us. So is there anything else, Joe, that you wanted to share before we conclude our presentation for the day? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was really happy to be able to share with everybody just to sort of open Pique your interest, open your eyes and, and uh, give you the opportunity to look at things a little bit differently because uh, there's a lot of really neat, uh, really amazing knowledge that's out there and it's fun to, fun to learn. Yeah, and maybe for the kids that are listening, um, maybe you can ask your families or your aunties or uncles or grandparents or, or anyone that you might know, maybe they know some really interesting things about the plants that are around where you live. And I think it's important that we um, take the time and sit with the plants. I know that maybe that sounds a little bit weird, but I really encourage you now that the weather is nice to go outside and sit by a tree because they actually do talk to us. They actually do um, have something to say. And I know uh, Joe has spent many 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 days sitting with trees and plants <laughs> <laughs> in swamps yeah. as well <laughs> with mosquitoes with mosquitoes yes <laughs> so pretty amazing that that plant let's try that word one more time say it again for us joe so it's gazebanushk gazebanushk and so maybe, um, maybe keep your eye out for that plant. Maybe you'll see it along your ways. Keep an eye out for it and see if you can recognize it when you do come across it. So as we're just coming to the end, um, any last things you wanna say to the students that are listening as we wrap it up here? Is is there anything that they were saying? <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are we live streamed it, so we don't have the ability to interact with the students that are uh, watching today. So it's just a one way stream for today. I'm sure that they have lots and lots of questions um, and we do have more of these planned so we can look at other um, ways to collect questions. But sometimes it's difficult okay. um, when there's lots of classes watching. But um, yeah, so. Uh, if there's anything else you wanted to share? Well, um, yeah, well, okay. So one of the, one of the things that I said to, towards the end of the video is talking about how important that medicine is for your bones. And one of the things that I wanted us to be able to see is that it looks just like your bones and every single medicine that's out there, every single plant that's out there, why it's so important that Jody said to spend time with uh, some of these plants is because they are communicating to you that Gazib Anushk is telling you that I am bone medicine. I am designed to help fix your bones. And so that's why you could see the joints. That's why you could see the structure that it has is just like all of the bones in your body. And, and that's the same goes for every plant that's out there. They're a reflection of the way that we look on the inside. And so when we, uh, it's like we could read the different plants like they're a comic book. <laughs> no one probably reads comic books though uh but they 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 have a story that they're telling and and you could understand them what they're trying to say and you could see like oh well, yeah this is bone medicine or if you see uh um uh if you see uh i wonder if i could go back right here to uh, uh where is it Right here, you could see in some of the food that we eat too, like, hey, 
that does look like my brain. And then that does let's what is that Joe? Can you just just in case kids maybe didn't make the connection? <laughs> oh, we got to scroll all the way back. Oh, there it is. Does yeah. anybody know what is that? Can anybody maybe recognize what that is? What is that, Joe? What kind of food is that? That's what called a. Of- it's called a wall yebogan. That's a round nut that we call walnuts. And this and doesn't that look at it. it looks just like our brain. Incredible. Yeah. And then even this food gives your brain lots of the, the, the nutrients that it needs uh, to help your brain be as strong and as healthy as it can be. And so you could even see this idea in the grocery store, spending time with the food that we're eating is important as well. Let's see here. Yeah, so you could see that scouring rush. That's what it's. That's the part of your body that this is that this medicine is going to help with is your bones, and that's really important as you're growing up, uh, as you're as you're developing to give your bones everything they need to grow as fast as they can, um, uh, and especially with growing pains. I know my daughter when she she's seven years old, and when she gets growing pains, it it really bothers her. I have to massage her at night <laughs> just so she could sleep. And so it and, and it wasn't until we used this medicine that that went away. So if we're dealing with things right now, there's lots of lots of reasons why kids will use medicine. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's just to make sure everything will be okay, not just for when we're sick, but to make sure that everything is going to be okay and uh, to prevent sickness. So what an incredible journey of learning you've just taken us all on this morning. That was a lot of information. And I hope that for the kids that are watching, that you see how incredible Anishinaabe knowledge is and how incredible the language is and how, um, you know, just that word described how many four different things about the plant. Yeah. Four different things in one word incredible. So I want to say, um, we'll teach you one more word before we go, which is miigwech. So that is how we say thank you. So I'm going to maybe ask the kids if you want to practice that to say miigwech. So miigwech. So on behalf of everyone watching here, Joe, I want to say chi miigwech, which is a big thank you for spending this morning with us and teaching us just a tiny little bit of the amazing world of plants and the amazing, um, incredible Anishinaabe uh, knowledge with us today. So, chimi gwech, Joe. Yeah, chimi gwech. That was awesome. <laughs> so thank you and a miigwech to all of you watching today. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day um, planned out and that you'll uh, tune in for other sessions that we offer during the rest of this year. So thank